don't think we've ever seen the the big science fiction Silver Age Superman aspects that we have in our movie. We've we've never seen this. You know, you'll 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 see when 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 the movie comes out. <laughs> okay. We've never seen th this specific part of Superman's life. Lex, like that, you know that Nick is Nick is um, uh, he's imposing. You know, you go, oh. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. Thanks for stopping by. If you're looking forward to Superman and the DCU, hit that subscribe button because we're going to talk about it, break it down, and have fun discussions with you uh, during its entire run. Superman is obviously kicking off in July, but Creature Commandos is the official beginning, the soft launch, if you will, of the DCU. And it started off, things off, I believe, with a bang. Two pretty solid episodes. The critics and fans seem to be enjoying it. We're off to a good start. Obviously, it's you know it's brought in elements of the Suicide Squad and things like that into the DCU. So, what is DCU canon? What's not? We're gonna obviously start stripping away at what happened. But I think I think really what's safe to say is anything that happened in the past is in the past, and let's just move forward. If you see the same actor portraying the same character, just accept it as you know a continuation, new iteration, whatever. Don't focus too much on the past, if that makes any sense at all. What about the past time? All that being said, James Gunn obviously doing the press tour for Creature Commandos and is being asked quite frequently about obviously Batman, but also Superman. As we all know, Superman's coming out in July, like I said, and we've seen, you know, some behind the scenes photos of that. James Gunn saying that nothing would ever leak. He wouldn't allow, he wouldn't shoot anything in an area that could have spoilers and be leaked uh, online accidentally so anything that leaks is obviously either on purpose or you know they're okay with it being leaked there's no spoilers you're not gonna get spoilers from any of that stuff so i'm really curious how much of this movie we're not going to know going into it and how much is actually going to get leaked out i'm really really curious about that also reports are coming out that there have been two test screenings and they've been very positive that being said they were internal test screenings with people at warner brothers and studio execs and, and things like that. So of course the reception would be warm and welcoming. This isn't somewhere that you're going to get a lot of negativity towards these. I don't know how much of a critical eye they're looking at. They might be looking at it with a creative critical eye and making little suggestions here and there, but not overly critical like a fan would at, or not a fan, a viewer would at an actual screening. But who knows? Who knows? James Gunn seems very happy with this. And he was on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast the other day. I did a video about his Batman comments on the channel. Today I want to talk about a little bit about his Superman comments on the channel because they really intrigued me and made me even more excited for what he's going to do. Now I know he has a certain style and look, when I say he has a certain style and I don't believe he's going to give us that style in Superman, but then he throws creature commandos at us and it is 199% James Gunn style. It's hard for me to... <laughs> To not recognize how dumb I sound. But I do believe that Superman will be very different. I think there is too much riding on Superman for it to be an all-out James Gunn fest. And I think James Gunn knows that. Not only as a director, as a filmmaker, but as a co-head of a studio. And all of that, I just feel, I just know that he knows that there is too much at stake with this. This is the beginning of the DCU. And as much as Creature Commandos is the actual introduction of the DCU, it's not really. Superman really is. Superman is going to hit a broader, a broader audience. And Superman is Superman at the end of the day. And everyone knows who Superman is. He is the Mickey Mouse of comic book characters. And so I believe I have full faith in what he's going to do with this movie. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. And if I am, we'll revisit these thoughts in July. And we will discuss. And I will come on here and I will say, well, I was wrong. But I really, for, look, I hope I'm not wrong for two reasons. One, I'll look like an idiot. <laughs> but the other reason is, I just want a good movie. Don't you just want a good movie? Don't you hope to see Superman and hope that Superman is a good movie? That's what I hope. But he was on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast, and he said we're going to get a Superman unlike anyone we've ever gotten. Not Christopher Reeves, not Brandon Routh, not Tom Welling, not Henry Cavill. We are going to get a brand new Superman, one that he doesn't feel has been portrayed on the big screen. Shall I say on the silver screen even? Because he's saying that his Superman is going to be more reminiscent of the Silver Age comics of Superman, which intrigues me because I just went on here and saying that James Gunn's not going to do James Gunn things with Superman, but the Silver Age Superman almost lends itself entirely to James Gunn. In fact, you could argue that James Gunn's filmmaking style was molded by the Silver Age of comics and Superman would fit in that. In the Silver Age of comics, Superman 
could have any power he wanted at any time. He could just be like, I want to do this, I could do it. He could sneeze and move solar systems. He had it all. Crypto was introduced. Supergirl was introduced. The Silver Age of Comics was a big time in comic industry, and it was mostly like saying, hey, what if comics were fun? What if we didn't take ourselves too seriously, and what if we had a grand old time with them? But the reason why I think this works for DC films, for DC studios, for the DCU, is because Superman is going to be surrounded by all these other superheroes. And his name is Superman. He needs to be super. There has to be something super about him. And if he's just on par with everybody else in this universe, what makes him so super? It's kind of a name. You're kind of stuck with that name, and you've got to live up to the potential of that. And Silver Age Superman, where, you know, instead of being limited by his speeding and leaping over uh, buildings in a single bound, he can now fly. He can now run break the sound barrier when he's running. He can do all of these things. And the limitations, there aren't any. You could do whatever, all bets are off. Now, I would say the concern would be utilizing that as a crutch, using that as a crutch going forward. You know, whenever you need to get out of a situation, you know, you're like, Superman can get out of it. He's Superman. I think you've got to really stay away from that. But again, it really lends itself to James Gunn's filmmaking style. And that could pose itself as a concern for viewers. Again, though, I don't think he's going to go all the way there. I think he's going to be a little bit more restrained than he has been in the past. I think we're going to see a different James Gunn than we've seen with the Suicide Squad and with Guardians of the Galaxy for sure. And I'm really excited what he's going to bring. In the same segment, in the same podcast interview, he talked about Lex Luthor. And he said Lex Luthor in the movies has never really been a threat, right? I mean, he has been a threat, but you've always known that Superman is going to show up and beat him down. Like, Superman's going to win the day, no question. He's saying that Nicholas Holt, Lex Luthor, in this Superman, is an imposing threat. That he is a real threat. That the audience will feel fearful when Lex Luthor is on the screen. He is an imposing figure, someone that you don't think necessarily Superman is going to take down so easily. Even though David Cornsweet bulked up, we all know how strong he is and how he is super and could probably do anything he wants at any time, Lex Luthor is going to be something about him in this iteration that we've never seen before, that is going to pose a genuine, legitimate threat on Superman that, the, that you know, might even go past this movie. There's a possibility that Lex Luthor is victorious at the end of this movie. I think that's tough. I don't know if you do that in the first movie. I don't know if The Empire Strikes Back works, if that's our introduction into Star Wars. I think the heroes have to win the first time, but the possibility is there that maybe Superman doesn't even know that Lex Luthor is the villain in this movie. We know as the audience, but maybe Superman doesn't know. Maybe he progresses to something bigger in the next movie, and we know that something big is coming, that Lex Luthor has a plan at hand that Superman isn't aware of that could end Superman or on some capacity, or even all superheroes in some way. And Max Lord could be involved in that also. But Lex Luthor is a character, the way he's talking about him, the way he's going to be this powerful, monstrous figurehead now, I'm really excited about that. Because I like Gene Hackman, love my, uh, Rosenbaum, Spacey, and then, of course, Eisenberg. You know, everyone loved Eisenberg, but they've all kind of, you know, they all have kind of had this goofy way about them. Well, not Rosenbaum will stay out of it because he wasn't even Superman, right, to his Lex Luthor. So we'll kind of keep Rosenbaum out. But all the theatrical ones, right, we've all been like, okay, well, they're, you know, they're going to get their comeuppance. Oh, just uh, take the gentleman's cape. But what's it going to be like when we see a villain that you say, maybe he won't. Maybe he won't. And maybe he moves on to the next movie and he's even more terrifying in the next one. So I think that comment alone, like what Lex Luthor could be for Superman, has me super excited, super pumped. I love how enthusiastic James Gunn is about this movie. I think that if this movie wasn't so good, he would he you know he'd still be pumping its tires. But the way he's pumping them up, the way he's saying he's proud of it, the way he wants people to see it, he can't wait for anybody to see it. I think we're. I honestly think, and this is the word going around. I don't know what it means, but I think it's going to be a special movie, and it's going to be. And look, I love Man of Steel. It's my number one, number two superhero movie of all time. Fight me if you want. I think we're going to get our best 